When I joined the university some four years ago, um, uh, the, 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 the library had taken its decision to establish a unit called research and scholarly communications. Obviously, research was the existing service that the, university, the library was providing to the university community. The scholarly communication was more about the new innovation in terms of how they would like to support the academics and postgraduate students within the university. So, so the very first thing that we started with was to establish um, the institutional repository, which we, we launched within the same year. And due to the success of the repository and, and, the, and the impact it had for, for research that was done by the university, we then, um, we were then approached by Department of Research Development, which is the custodian of all research journals that were published by the university to say, can't you then host the journals, the university, the university journals on the Kofsi Scholar, which is our institutional repository? Because what has emerged was that the, the, the journals were published on the university website and it was not visible. Most search engines would not find. So uh, those, those journal articles that were published by, 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 by these journals. So as, as when, we, when we started with that process, we then started engaging them, um, both the TRT and the, and the editors to say, there is a better platform, and, and some of our journal editors had already attended some uh, workshop that was conducted by ASAF on open journal system. So, so that's how we got involved as a library. We, we then encouraged the university to say, we would like to assist uh, our journals to publish, let them to be published on the open journal system. So broadly, as we were engaging, the very first thing that we, we agreed on with my team was that the most ideal situation is to try and make sure that when we publish these journals, they should comply with, with a number of, um, they should comply with the international standards so that this, uh, the, the manner in which we are going to publish them, it should, there should be an added benefit. It should not only be about um, uh, making this research uh, available to the world, but we must also make, try and make sure that these journals are indexed by, by, by relevant indexers in the world. So just quickly, as you have seen with uh, Plan S, it has 10 principles. Um, uh, America has similar 10 principles. So although these two uh, models were, were almost conceived at the same time, if conceived is the right way. Uh, just few months in between them, um, they, they, they differ in terms of strategy. While the others are, are, are pushing more towards uh, gold open access, we see these ones, uh, the America is more towards what, we, what, what uh, Garrett was referring as platinum to try and, and the very first principle is around um, that scientific knowledge is, should be generated with public, generated by public should be used for common good and it's, it's a universal right. The very, I mean, I mean that, 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 that for us, when I arrived here, the university had already signed the Berlin Declaration. Already this principle, the university has already accepted that principle. So COPSI Journal, as they are published currently, they look at the issue of, the idea is that all that is published by these journals should be available immediately. And that is the principle that we have. If, if, if. So in terms of, if, if as a university are looking at this, we already tick this box. The second principle, it says that the the Open Academy owned, it's non-profit, non-subordinated, sustainable, and with the responsible metrics model 
ought to be strengthened. Um, when we started the, this process, University of the Free State was publishing approximately, if I'm not mistaken, about 15 journals. But only eight were accredited journals. And, and they took a principal decision to say only those eight accredited journals should be uh, uh, supported. So, so the issue of quality came into play. So some of those journals that were published in, each, in the past, they, they fell by the wayside. Obviously, we are of the opinion that there should be more new journals coming into the, in the field. So what we have done, uh, what, does, what we have done as a principle is that we've got a very strict criteria that we, we, we have then developed. If there is a new uh, journal that will be, would, be, uh, would develop, it has to fit into the uh, strict criteria. The third principle, uh, America speaks to open access as neither no future, no meaning unless the research assessment role is evolved. This also speaks to what Gareth has just mentioned earlier on. Because there's one thing, there's nothing that frustrates me like trying to convince researchers to publish open access. Um, because obviously high impact factor comes to play. Branded journal titles come into play. So unless the system itself, because now while NRF in, uh, uh, issued a statement on open access that all uh, NRF funded journals should be part, but when it comes to rating the researchers themselves, they, they also look at the impact factor. Then it defeats the purpose. So we, it, it needs, we need to look at that. But the, again, our view is that as we continue making sure that we, pro, uh, we produce quality channels, their impact factor will ultimately grow. In terms of, uh, if you look at um, principle four, open access consolidation demands transitional to digital and scientific communication. The, we, we currently use uh, OJS as a system to publish uh, our, our journals. And, and we are in the process of um, um, launching Fixture to publish our data. So, and, and so, so the, I, the, it's, it's quite clear that um, um, we have moved away from, from, from traditional way of publishing towards this. So the, these, these are some of the things that we're currently doing. In terms of financial uh, sustainability, or what you call principle number five, that uh, the institution needs to invest in open access or to be in line with the benefit to the society. This is, um, if you look at currently, Kofsi Journals um, and Kofsi Scholar, the university had taken a principal decision to put funds aside to say these funds were making available to support open access. Although there is still an outcry from academics, every time when one engages with academics, there is an outcry to say, while the university has an open access policy, we are not funding. There is no money ring fenced for, 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 for researchers to publish on open access. This is still one area that we, 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 we think. But in terms of us building the infrastructure to support open access publishing, that's, that's what we are doing. And, and, and we are all, not only looking at our own institution, but we are also trying to work uh, with other uh, organization and institution to, to build that infrastructure. The, I, the one thing I like about the America approach it's, it's, it's those organizations coming together, building an infrastructure. Currently, in our country, we find that each institution is using its own expertise and, 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 and financial resources to build such instances. Until such time that we pull our resources together, 
I think this will be the best way to go. Principle number six speaks to sustainability by means of cooperation. And, and, and this is what, again, if, if what we have seen, um, how did we up even arrive at this route? It's because we, we started engaging with colleagues um, in community of practice uh, 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 organization. We have seen, for instance, a uh, organization like ASAF providing workshops. We, we then worked with them to, to assist us to develop um, uh, um, the infrastructure. They, have, we, they workshopped us in terms of principles, best uh, principles to follow. So all that, that would help in terms of sustainable. So, so that is what, that is how we as University of Free State have done. So we have not re, uh, started from scratch. What we have done, we have looked at what UCT has done, what VIRTS has done, what UP has done, and we then participate in those committee of practice where skills are then shared amongst us. Then we learn, we develop. Um, we, we, in the industry, we lost one of our, one of our best mentor in, in, now the name is just, from Stellenbosch. Hilton. I mean, if Hilton was not there, I don't think we would be here as University of Free State where we are now. Because it didn't matter what time of the day. So that, that, that part, cooperation and, co and working together, it, it does. Uh, because I remember when we, we, we started with the institutional repository, most universities had to um, uh, 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 employ, use a consultant, um, and it cost, it cost them a lot of money. We, we did it on our own, because we were, we were able to cooperate with other uh, colleagues. The, on the principle seven, in terms of diversity uh, of scientific journal, hence, um, and, and obviously, uh, this is what um, the, the, the DHEC guidelines also uh, 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 um, put emphasis on. So, so, so the, what we have seen um, currently is that if our editorial teams were building, were building capacity, they, maybe this is one slide where one probably it would have been better if we had all our own editors available today to be able to share with you how we have built it, how, how are they doing it with, within, the, within the, uh, the university in building this. Just to show you um, one of the things that we, are, that we are currently doing in terms of building capacity within the university, we, we normally have different workshops, uh, one to to, to assist editorial team and editors, general editors. One of one such recently, it was, um, uh, it was a workshop by Professor Mutun from Christ, uh, Stellenbosch University, who, were, who, who was uh, sharing ideas in terms of how we can create quality, um, um, quality journals. One of the things I was hoping initially that uh, maybe um, Cornell will address in the introduction in terms of America is that because they are pushing for platinum uh, open access where, pub, where authors don't pay to publish. What we have seen is, is more European people from the north publishing in those journals because it's cheaper to publish. They're, in, the, in the process then the, the local uh, uh, authors become disadvantaged in the process. So you, you need to balance this. And, 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 and so, but at the same time, if you have more foreigners publishing in your journal, then the prestige goes up. It's a catch-22. It, it's, it, it's, you find yourself in a situation where you, you, you try and balance the two. But what 
what is important, what you can see, is that although uh, maybe from two years from now we can do another study to see, in terms since we have started publishing Kofsi Channel on open access, how has the green moved to, more towards the blue? Just to show then because of the reach. But already you can see, I mean, like at Tatiologia, you can see that that green is it's, 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 it's growing. Um, um, already, um, all our current Kofsi journals are published on Creative Commons license. Um, 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 Gareth went in length to explain that. And, and obviously, the impact. If I can tell you a story, um, in the first month after publishing Kofsi journals, there was a particular article, I can't remember it, um, um, uh, uh, from, from the Law Journal. The, the, the download went up over 1,000%. It just skyrocketed. In, in, so, so the impact is there. You can immediately see. But as you know, citation, um, citation you, you can only start seeing them two, three years from now. So it will be a useful exercise when we have such a similar conference to come and just showcase, post, and, and show you that open access does uh, have an impact. Except, except to say, um, the, the, it's, it's, the, the, the principle is not the principle of, uh, it's not just to, to make sure that the, the scholarly output of our researchers is seen by, by other scholars outside, but it's also it's for public good. It's public funds for public good. That's the principle. The citation is upon us. <laughs> and the last uh, principle in terms of um, is that the various dynamics to generate and circulate knowledge per field ought to be respected, especially for social sciences and humanities. In short, as this unit within the library, scholarly communication, we are already looking at other means uh, to make sure that we, we, we create many venues or avenues to publish. Uh, for, 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 for researchers to, 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 to share the information. That's why we're looking at publishing of data. That's why we're looking at open monograph. I know that some people would, would, would be thinking, why would I uh, make my book open, open access? Um, I remember at one stage uh, early, um, I think some eight years ago, 10 years ago, when Human Science Research Council started publishing their books, open access, the sales for print copy went up. So sometimes it might look like it doesn't make business sense, but actually it makes good sense. With these few words, I'd like to thank you. This is how University of Free State, we are contributing towards open access for now. And then obviously, we would be looking forward to supporting Glenn and his uh, initiative in terms of transformational agreements. I thank you. <laughs>